Welcome back to 15.5 Angle Relationships in Circles and this is the last lesson of Geometry B, Credit 3 of Chapter 15. Not the last one, but of Chapter 15. We're moving on to Chapter 16 in the next few videos. We're almost there. All right, first thing we're going to go over is the Proving the Intersecting Chords Angle Measure Theorem. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> So just so you can kind of see, I labeled a couple of things. Um, we're going to be looking at some angles that are inside the circle and some outer arcs that, of course, are the edge of the circle. So I'm going to highlight a couple things. Feel free to do so. If I go too fast, please pause. Um, it's important that you kind of understand where everything goes because it's going to be helpful when setting up our equations and solving them out. So here we have a measure of angle 1, which is inside is going to be equal to half the outer arc, in this case QP, plus our other outer arc. Notice how it kind of forms like a little bit of a bow tie, kind of? You're like, what bow tie? See, like a bow tie. See? Oh, sorry about that. Oh, it's going away. That's what I meant by a bow tie. So essentially this arc right here, um, which is right here, and that arc, we add those arcs together to equal the angle here in the middle. Okay. Okay. Um, we can also find the angle, angle 4, by doing the same thing. Um, taking half of the arc measures here, QR and P. S. Know that in the calculations you'll be receiving, even though in the theorem it's half, um, some students did say, hey, is there another way I can use half? Um, we can say half is like dividing by two. Um, so that's another way we can write it. We could also write it as multiplying by um, a decimal value of 0 0.5. So these are just the different ways you can write it as a fraction. We can show it as division. We can also multiply by a decimal. And this actually was a fan favorite for most of the students in the class. So if you see on my equations, I kind of use 0 0.50 rather than half in my calculations. It's still the same thing, but it's just a little easier to work with when solving equations. All right. So don't be alarmed. You're going to see that in the next three, two, one. Here we go. So here we have find each unknown measure. Okay, in this case, they want us to find M, P, K. So notice there's the letter M, P, and then K. So M, P, K. It's right there. I don't know what it is. So we could use the measure right there. And we're going to be looking at the arcs of that. So I'm going to color code some stuff. These two are the arcs that are being used. So go ahead and place the numbers where you think they should go. And unpause. That would be 61 and 111. Let's go ahead and take a moment right now. And let's add 61 plus 111. And if you added those together, because I'm trusting that you did that, that would be 172. So let's go ahead and multiply. 0 0.5 times 172. or 172 divided by 2, whichever feels more appropriate. So if you do write that, will I get the same answer? Yes, you will. Whichever you decide to do, um, both would equal 86 degrees. So that would be the missing angle measure. Here's another one. So we have, um, it tells us in this case they want us to find the arc because we don't know what that is. PR. Um, so, that's interesting. What's a letter you want to use for something we don't know? I'm a fan favorite of X. So, we can use the letter X. If you want to use a different letter, you can. It's okay. But I'm going to go ahead and highlight some numbers, um, and letters. So here we have both of our arcs, 82 and X. Go ahead and place them where you think they should go. And the inner angle, which is... <gasps> right there. Let's go ahead and place that there where it should go. Notice that I've used these labels, so if at any point they're helpful, write them out. It helps. 
but we should have put our numbers and letters in the appropriate places. I know this is not algebra class, but we're going to solve an equation. Draw a line right down the middle for equal sign. Let's go ahead and multiply 0 0.5 times 82 and 0 0.5 times x. I'm going to bring down that 58. What do you think will go here? 41 plus 0 0.5x. All right, what's the opposite of a positive 41? Negative 41. That's going to cancel out. I'm left with 0.5x <laughs> equals 17. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.5. And that gets us x equals. Unpause. That would be 34 degrees. All right. So another thing we're going to go over is tangent secant interior angle measure theorem. So let's say I have an angle measure, angle 1. The way I can figure that out is by taking half of my arc. I could also find this angle measure, angle 2, by taking half of the other side or the other arc. So again, we could use half. We could say we're dividing by 2. We could also use 0 0.5. Each one is pretty much saying the same thing. Okay, you probably will see me use this a lot. Decimals were a fan favorite, as you saw before. Oh. All right, so on this next one, number six, they ask us to find PN. So you'll notice it's an arc measure that we're finding, PN. They do tell us, which I don't know, right? We don't know what that is. They do tell us, though, that the angle... The inside angle is, and they do tell us, well, they don't tell us, but we'll use the letter X for something we don't know. Go ahead and place them in their appropriate places. That would be 61 and X. What's the opposite of multiplying by 0 0.5? Dividing. So we'll divide both sides by 0 0.5, and X equals 122. One student did tell me, like, oh, I could also multiply it by 2 to get that. Either one. All right. The next one. It's the same picture, but this time we're finding M, N, P. So we're trying to find that measure. So again, we're going to use our theorem. Um, that's our internal angle. That's our arc angle. So I can write arc and inner angle. Okay, let's go ahead and put the numbers where they, we think we, they should go. X and 238. All right, so this one's already solved for X. I really just have to calculate what's 0 0.5 times 238. That would be 119. All right, so we've gone over a couple of different theorems I want to go over. Notice how all of them we were adding or multiplying by half. These ones in particular, notice we are going to take our outer angle, and that will equal half, very familiar to us. Uh, we're going to use our outer and inner arc. we kind of been doing that a little bit, but instead all of these are going to be subtracting because all of the angles are outside of our circle. They're no longer inside, they're outside. So take a moment, kind of write some stuff down. RPS, the outer angle is equal to the outer arc minus our inner arc. Go ahead, same thing for this one. Our outer angle, which in this case is ABC, is equal to half our outer arc minus our inner arc. Our outer angle, in this case BAD or DAB, is equal to our outer arc minus our inner arc. All right, so notice how I've labeled that. Um, I'm going to color code some things to help you out, but our outer arc, I mean our outer angle is there. Our outer arc is there, and our inner arc is there. 
Uh, I labeled these so that way, one, you could see the color code of how they go and also labeling the words so that way in the homework you can kind of start doing that on your own. Go ahead, take a moment, put them in their place. And that would be, hopefully put that all in their place. Um, go ahead and take a moment. What's 161 take away 67? That's 94. Let's go ahead and multiply 0. 0.5 times 94. And that would be 47. All right, we're going to use this again. Our outer and our outer angle equals 0. 0.5 times outer arc minus our inner arc. So let's take a moment right now and they give us a picture. Let's draw that out. A, E, B. So that means this right here is 2, 2, 5. Now something they don't go over in the credit, which I wish they would, a lot of students don't know, that a full circle goes all the way around and that measures 360 degrees. So we want to find a, C, B, that's the question, but we need to know this inner arc first. And the way we're going to do that is since part of this here is 2, 2, 5, that means it must be the rest that adds up to 360. Or in this case, 360 take away 2, 2, 5 would be the rest that's here. So take some moment, go ahead and calculate that out. That would be 135. Now I don't know what that arc is, or I, mean, I don't know what that angle is. So I'm going to highlight that. And we can give it a variable, it helps. Let's go ahead and plug in the numbers where we think they should go. Outer arc minus our inner arc. Hopefully wrote these in. Let's go ahead and do some calculations. Hopefully you did the calculations. Got 90. And do that last one. That would be 45. All right, so we're going to write in a couple other angle relationships. So notice if the vertex is on the circle, we're going to use half the intercepted arc. And here are some of those diagrams. If the vertex is inside the circle, we're going to do half the sum of the arcs. In this case, here's a worked out example. And if our vertex is outside the circle, still going to use the half, but it's going to be half the difference of our intercepted arcs. And there are some examples. So pause. I know that's a lot to write down, but it's there to kind of be an overview of everything that we've kind of gone over in this chapter. So please take a moment, pause, and write that down. You did it. Let's continue with number 10. So they want us to find Kn. Okay, there it is. Now, I don't know what that is, so we're going to use a letter. Um, looking back at our chart, we're going to use, I'm trying to find our Kn. If I knew what this is, I could then figure out what this is. So notice we have a line, right? 79's there don't know what that is. I know if I add 79 plus something, it will be 180. So let's work that out. What is 180 take away 79? What would that be? Hopefully you wrote that in. That'd be 101. So now that we know what this is, we know what that is, we can now use this formula here. So our inner angle is 101. Our outer arc and our outer arc, well, since both of them were adding, doesn't matter where we put them, so I'm going to put 86 there and x here. Let's go ahead and solve this one out. So go ahead and draw a line down the equal sign. Let's go ahead and put 0 0.5 times 86 is, and we'll distribute. Hopefully you wrote down that this would be 43, 0.5x. What's the opposite of a positive 20, 43? Negative. Those will go away. We're left with 0.5x equals 58. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. And take a moment right now, calculate it out. That would be 116. We will come back to do the checkpoint in just a moment. Stay tuned for the next video.